Ainga Brauweiss. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. It is fucking hot out there and in an attempt to cool myself down a little bit, I have got one of these. This is the Ainga Brau Weiss. Now Ainga are one of my favourite breweries. I absolutely love what they do. They do a couple of standout beers. Most notable for me, and probably my favourite from the, is the Altbayerisch Dunkel, which is basically a bottom fermented dark German beer. It is absolutely gorgeous. It reminds me of an old English nut brown ale, but it's just got a little bit more Moorish qualities to it. And that was the first beer I tasted from my Inga, and I have been hooked ever since. Their beers are absolutely superb. This one, I have not tried. Now, I've tried their light wheat beer, which is a lower ABV wheat beer, but this is the full strength, the full fat, if you like, 5.1%. And if it's anything like the light wheat beer, then this is gonna be a good one because even though they said it was a light wheat beer, they would made a point of saying there was reduced calories in it. It still had all the flavor of a really good wheat beer. In fact, I have tasted wheat beers from other regions, which were higher ABV, you know, the full, the full Monty, and they didn't have as much flavor as that. So I have got high hopes for this one. And then, of course, Oyinga are from German beer heaven, that is Bavaria, and they do a wide range of traditional German beers. Their Keller beer is really good as well. Check that one out, really nice indeed. I think I've tried most of their stuff. I've got the Pils in the fridge. The Hellas, I did find a little disappointing. It was good, don't get me wrong. But when I think of Bavaria and Hellas, I think of the Paulana stuff, I think of um, the Augustina stuff, and all them really good Bavarian breweries that are doing um, Hellas and Lagers. You know, Togensa is another one as well. But that wasn't quite up there. It tasted a little bit more like a North German Pilsner. It was slightly bitter, which isn't really characteristic of a Bavarian Hellas, but that's by the by, that's me being picky. On its own merits, it was still a good beer. So this brewery, Oyinga, really do know what they're talking about. And as I say, they're one of my favorites. I love them. So let's stop gassing and let's get this beer checked out. Right. 500 mil, 5.1% according to the label. Uh, as I always like to point out on these, you have got the EU protected status, so this is a genuine Bavarian beer. Uh, if you're new to wheat beer, please check out my history of German wheat beer. That will give you a bit of a context on what German wheat beer is, the styles, because there's different styles of German wheat beer, and the good ones from the bad ones. So please check that out. What I didn't do is I didn't, I don't, do people need it? They probably do, probably don't. I'm being a bit presumptuous here, probably being a bit condescending at the same time. But there's, there is a way to pour the perfect German wheat beer. So I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, yeah, and of course, final word on this, it all conforms to the Reinheitsgebot, as do all the Iinga beers and as do most Bavarian brewers' beers conform to it. So, let's stop gassing and let's get this beer open. Right, now there is one thing that I, well, one thing, there is another thing that I really like about this brewery is the caps they put on their bottles. They are like little oil paintings of their breweries. Look at that. That's like a little vignette. Vignette? I don't know how that's pronounced, but there you go. Very nice indeed. I'm just gonna pull this out. I'm not really gonna 
sniff it from the bottle because you're probably going to get a lot of sulfur. I'm going to probably get a lot of sulfur and it's going to put me off a little bit. So I've stopped sniffing beer out of bottles. I don't think it's a good thing to do. I think you get more of an idea what you're going to get out of the glass. So I'll just show you how to pour a vice beer. You know, if, if this is a new style to you. First of all, you wet the glass. This glass may look like it's, you know, it's had water in it or it's just been cleaned. That is actually rinsed out. They do recommend that you rinse the glass out first. They say it stops it sticking to the sides of the glass. It's basically to stop you filling out a beer into a dirty glass, basically. So what you do, you hold it at about that much of an angle and you just let it pour. Now, what I like to do is as soon as that liquid gets to the rim of the glass, I like to level it out a bit and where this is heavily carbonated it will just show you a head like that now there's a little bit left in there. there's about a quarter of a bottle left in there this is quite lively so it's the head's quite there give it a swirl around get that yeast sediment stop it from sticking to the bottom please don't roll an open bottle across a desk there's a certain beer reviewer that's advocating that that is absolute nonsense it doesn't work there you go that is all you need to do. Make sure you get everything into the glass. I know I've mentioned it before, but some British brewers, when they leave their bottle conditioned ales, when they leave the yeast in there, they say not to pour the yeast in. With vice beer, you have to do it. Otherwise, you are missing out on the flavour. And it should look something like that. I like to call that a Bavarian Cornetto. You've got a two or three finger white, foamy white head. Very cloudy, hazy, orangey, yellow, amber with an absolute ton of carbonation in there. And just one final word, if you're gonna be pouring a crystal vice, just throw a little a little grain of rice in there, that'll keep the head nice and, nice and fluffy. So there you go, what are we getting on the nose? Yeah, very nice fennels of banana and clove, as you would expect. But there's, some also, there's also a little bit of spicy tart spiciness which is coming from the yeast as well and of course as i always say with wheat beers yeast is the thing that will make or break it now you can brew with wheat and you can produce a beer that looks like this if you use different yeast it will not taste like this my case in point being if you've heard of the german brewer called um bolton they use alt beer yeast in a wheat beer it tastes completely different from a bavarian wheat beer Nice on its own merits, but just completely different. It's, it, it really does throw you where you're expecting nice banana and clove esters. You don't get that at all. Anyway, that's the last thing I'm going to say. And of course, this is all top fermented. If you're wondering what the, what the rustling is down there, that's Percy. He's scratching his nose. He's dying in this heat. He's really suffering, as is this foamy white head. So shut up and let's start drinking. Zum Wohl, as they say in Germany. Oh, that is a really nice one. And it's unique because there is quite, quite a spicy, bitter finish on that. But in the mouth, you do get this in certain German wheat beers, and they call it bubblegum ester. Of course, you've got the banana and clove, but certain German wheat beers also have this. It's what's known as a bubblegum ester. If you've ever had, a, um, what's that? What's that chewing gum? Juicy fruit. Have you ever tried juicy fruit? If you haven't, and if you can still get them, I, don't, I haven't seen them lately, but if you can you know, find a juicy fruit chewing gum, try one of them, taste that, and then try one of these, and you'll see the similarities. Not all German wheat beers have that. Edelstoff, I do remember having that, which is a wheat beer from East Germany. This has got it also, and it is really nice. Mm. Oh, and then there is a nice, you're left with a slightly bitter, nice bitter finish on the end of it, which you don't get in a lot of wheat beers, but it works, <clears throat> it really does. The head is dissipating on this quite a bit. I think it's due to the heat. It is so hot in this room. We've got a, 
the house is sort of south facing, so the sun is beating down on this. I've got blackout curtains there, that pull them over, otherwise you just wouldn't see anything. But <clears throat> but yeah, the, the head is sort of suffering a bit. But this is a real good one. And on a day like this, that has come straight out of the fridge. And this is really refreshing. Mm. Lovely banana and clove esters. Really nice. And the bubblegum ester on top of that as well. All swollen about in the mouth. Lots of carbonation. And a bitter, a unique bitter finish on this. Not too bitter. I'm probably making a little bit too much of that, but I can notice it. I, I, wheat beer is one of my favourite styles, but I can really notice it in this one. And it's nice. It works. And I wouldn't have expected anything less from my anger because they get things right. So what's the verdict on Ayinga Brauweiss? Yeah, really good. I wouldn't have expected anything less. I tried the light wheat beer that they do and that was a reduced calorie. So if you like, it was a, a vice beer light and the ABV was lower as well, but it tastes really good. And this stuff is even better. This, you know, I thought that the, the, the light stuff had all the flavors, but this stuff is just full of flavor. Oh, hello, Purse, you come back in, have you? He don't know what to do. This weather is so hot, he's, he's all over the shop. Yeah, and it's, again, nothing less than I would expect from Bavaria. You've got all the top German vice beer brewers, in my opinion. There's a couple of exceptions, but the vast majority are based in Bavaria. So if you're going to be brewing a vice beer in Bavaria, you have got to be on top of your game because there is just so much competition. And Iinga have come up trumps. This, for me, is a really nice one. Is it the best? No, it's not the best, unfortunately, but it's it's up there with the, the Hacker Shaw stuff, the Meisels, the, the, the Franciscana, I sort of say is a little bit lower, but the Paulana stuff you know all the real top german bavarian brewers and i'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 because it is a fantastic drink without comparing it to any other vice beer brewers but it isn't the best in my opinion schneider vice are the best you know i've got the glass i always drink wheat beer out of a schneider glass vice, gl glass because they are the they are the kings along with Weinstefana, I think the two are sort of sitting on the throne together. But this is certainly a good one. And it's what's really nice about this though, it's got that bubblegum ester that you don't get in all of the German wheat beers. But it's really nice. And as I say, if you wanna, if you wanna know what a, the bubblegum esters I'm talking about are, it's like a juicy fruit chewing gum. That's what it reminds me of. It's probably, I don't know where the fuck that's come from, but that's what I've got in my head. But yeah, really nice. 10 out of 10. Definitely recommended. Get them on Beers of Europe. Don't know whether you can get this in German bars in the United Kingdom, but you can certainly get it on Beers of Europe. Uh, Beer Wolf, I think, do Oyinga. But I got this from Beers of Europe, and I think they do a hell of a lot of the Oyinga range. And I recommend everything from Oyinga. I don't think I've had a bad beer from Iinga and I have tried most of them. Not all, but most. So yeah, there you go. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>